Good morning, Traders Edge with High Tech Trading Analysis. This morning, I want to take just a brief second to discuss some of the updates I've done for um, the draw bar. Now, I'm not going to discuss a lot of its features other than just what's been added this year in these last updates. Now, the first thing I want to discuss is one thing I realized after the fact was I never discussed my VWAP custom drawing tool. Now, it's been in my draw bar since last March, but it never made it into any of the previous videos. So let's discuss that just a second. We have an icon here in our toolbar, and if we hover over it, we see HTVWAPDT, drawing tool. VWAP drawing tool, like anything, we left click on it, we start to draw, and we're going to draw VWAP. We're also going to draw three standard deviations above and three standard deviations below. I guess you would consider this an anchored VWAP in that it's going to start to develop from the point of the start of our draw object. Now, if we move that to any given point, that's going to adjust from that start and develop onward to the end. Now, a couple things also is that if we right click on this, I provide a custom context menu. In that menu, I allow you to extend the VWAP and standard deviations to the last bar on the chart. Or I allow you to show and hide whatever standard deviations and or VWAPs you would like to see at any given time. You can also double click on this and set the various, um, set your color and style properties. Save those as templates and easily load them. So now one thing that we should be aware of is that if we come back and draw VWAP through the day and we were to compare that to let's just say my VWAP indicator notice that the that the values are off a bit the draw object can only use the primary series of the bar so whatever that is it has to average the volume over those price series to uh, accumulate and calculate those values. Whereas in my particular product, I'm using a one minute data series. So it's going to be anchored down to a minute. This is a five minute. It's going to be a little different. If I put this on a 30 minute, the draw object itself would be a little different as well. So now let's move on to the most recent updates. Draw object type removal. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is I've got a bunch of draw objects on my chart, and there are four different types, right? I've got a line, a horizontal line, a vertical line, and then I guess I drew a ray up here. In the previous version, we could come up to our remove all draw objects, and we could right-click, and we could see the types of objects that were on our chart. And if we wanted to remove all the lines, <clears throat> we could do that. And we could remove all of just the lines rather than removing everything off of the chart or having to click on every line to remove it. Okay, we can still do that, but we can do a little more now. I've made it easier in that all we have to do now is right click on the icon itself. So instead of right-clicking here and getting a list, why don't we just come back to the icon, right-click on it, and all my lines will be gone. Same thing for any of the objects. We right-click instead of left-clicking. Right-click to remove, left-click to draw. Simple enough. No idea why I had never thought of it earlier. Okay, so left click this, all the objects are gone. Simple enough, right? Now, rectangles. Um, I've changed my default themes. Oops, excuse me. Uh, let's 
just load a default rectangle, right? So if you draw a rectangle, it looks something like this. Now we've always had the ability to go in and extend this left and extend this right. What I've added to the extend right to both rectangles and regions is an alert on break and an alert on touch. Now, what this means, notice that if I turn either one of these on, I'm now going to see a little A in my rectangle saying that the alert set. What this means is that if price comes up and touches this line, I'm going to get an alert. Or, and, if price were to breach the upper line, the break, I would get an alert. Now, depending on, I'm going to get two alerts here. Let's bring this over. I mean, these are set, so once it touches, I get an alert. Once it breaches, I get an alert. Now, if I were to bring this same rectangle down here and reset those, because the rectangle was below price when the alert was set, this now becomes the touch line, and this now becomes the breach line. So it depends on where the rectangle is when you set that alert. Touch, breach. So in also within these, I've added a text box up here at the top, and we can now put whatever custom label we want for this rectangle. For instance, custom label. We can type whatever we want, and we will end up with a custom label here. Now, we can use the shift enter key and put that on another line we can use a tab well the tab doesn't the tab will work as long as there's a letter in front rectangles regions alert on touch break custom labeling now we've done something very similar to all of the lines All of the lines used to and still can extend right and extend left, depending on what they are. I mean, a, a ray is already extended right. But in, in this case, depending on what the object is, we can extend that right. We can extend that left. We've also, when it's extended right, added a show extend price label. So what we're doing here is we're taking this line excuse me let me back up just a second we had let's just say a trend line off here came down breached it touched it now it's going down that's just our hypothetical assumption if we would happen to get above this particular line I think the assumption might be over and it looking at going the other way again I'm just hypothetically coming up with something to demonstrate right so this is showing us where price needs to come back to test our original trend and now I can just set an alert on that so if price comes up and touches our line I'm gonna get an alert and if I pull that over and simulate that by pulling price down we can see that once price touches it we get an alert Now, one more thing. Hey, uh, to all of our uh, our lines, we've also added custom labeling, right? You can add whatever you want to any given line. Now, in the line um, right now, it's going to be underneath the range of the start point. 
I'm considering adding something to our extended price as well. Now, here's a good example. I just activated show extend price, but I'm not seeing anything. Anything with a dash means that it's associated to this menu item, and this menu item must be checked for this to work. So even though that was checked before, since its main menu item wasn't, that's not going to work. Same thing down here for tick offset. We're showing this price. If I turn the tick offset off, that will go off. Now I need to rearrange a little of this in the next version because in any case, these will be a, a little different, but it, it's pretty simple, pretty easy. You should get the hint real quick. So again, for any of these, we can do a label. But for that label to be on, we need to be showing our range label down here. Then if it's extended right, we can show our price labels up here at the top now. And we can set alerts. So there is a limitation to the alerts though. If we came to a different panel and we had a line on our panel, let's just say that um, we're looking at that for our trend line and we're look, we want to know when price comes down and touches this down here. And we set this alert on touch. If this panel is not active, that alert is not going to work. Meaning it's in the background. Doesn't matter if you set the draw bar to every tick on price change. That's part of the draw object itself. And if it's not in an active window, visible, right? Not minimized. Can't minimize it. Can't be in the background. Or the alert isn't going to work. That's just a function of NinjaTrader right now, and I'll look at maybe overcoming that in the future. But as of today, that's the way it works. All right, I think that kind of covers it. Um, thanks for your time, and have a great day.